Mark here and welcome to the Ten Acre Woods on this blustery windy day. Uh, we have been getting thunder showers rolling through now and again. Not a whole lot of rain in this area. Some of the other parts of the provinces have gotten their share of rain. Uh, so we have had to been uh, watering the garden. We will be checking on the garden in a little bit. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, we do weekly videos on all of our animals. Uh, we are a family-run, non-profit animal rescue and interactive petting farm. Uh, in the past week, we had Dwight and Toby, uh, two small goats that came in probably about a month, month and a half ago. Uh, they headed off to their new home. I'll show you that clip in a moment. Uh, now, they came in with Charlotte. Uh, and Charlotte was right here. Here's Charlotte and the alpaca. <laughs> Here's Charlotte here. Uh, so Charlotte and Toby and Dwight, they didn't really form that bond. Uh, Charlotte kind of, uh, you know, she's still kind of fitting in. Uh, if, if and when we do rehome her, we will do it with, um, uh, with another goat uh, or sheep uh, that, uh, that bonds with her. So we try to rehome the animals um, especially if it's uh, somebody who's new to the animals, we try to rehome them together. Uh, so when um, when they came and picked up the uh, two, Toby and Dwight, uh, it's the same person that is going to be taking uh, April and Baxter, uh, which are this year's kid goats, the two new ones. Uh, and they'll probably be going to their new home, I'm guessing, uh, early August. Uh, in around that time frame, uh, along with the other four kid goats from this year. Uh, so I'll show you the clip where Toby and Dwight headed off. Uh, I just wanted to add a little bit. Uh, the woman that came and picked them up, uh, she talked about uh, picking up some supplies, picking up oats, uh, and oats with molasses, also known as 60-30-10. Uh, you want to be um, sparingly on that. Uh, whenever giving grains to animals, especially rumen animals like goats and sheep, uh, they can develop bloat uh, by eating too much. Uh, so using it sparingly, using it kind of as a treat form uh, to call them in works well, um, but only uh, ration it to maybe a, a, you know, a quarter of a cup or an eighth of a cup a day. Uh, they should be eating their, uh, their hay, their fresh forage, uh, and the grains is a treat. So here's that video of them leaving the farm. I was food in the tree. They're, they're like totally into trees now. We have lots. Their whole Good. area is just bush. Good. Well, and I mean, when it comes to food, they, guess what? They don't get anything but grass and greens and grass. So, I mean, I was thinking it afterwards. I'm like, well, what am I going to give her? See, and we managed to get PV Mart today. Okay. So we got a bag of rolled oats and a bag of barley and one of them has molasses very little <laughs> like little amount all like use it for training use okay. it for you know here, you know yeah and there's like more in the winter time that there'll yes. be more of it right yes. yeah 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 it's a very sugary one with the molasses yeah. okay we have a lot to get the two babies. well and i have a feeling that it might be earlier for the others cool I i'm ready I might stop goat yoga a little sooner. earlier. They need more hands on, and goat yoga is just not filling up this year. Mm -hmm. So, just pick up, yeah, pick up the little. Do you want me to grab Dwight? Yeah, she would just wants Toby. <laughs> Dwight, they come in as a package. Bros, gotta stay together, man. <laughs> He's like, I'm still eating. I'm good. Grab the stick. <laughs> Okay, he's heavy though. Come on, Toby. Come on. 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 I just finished cleaning out the van and all the goat poops. <laughs> oh, they fit perfect. 
<laughs> See you later, guys. Right? So something else that happened this past week. <laughs> can you recognize these two? That is George and Moira. Moira is uh, substantially smaller. Uh, she is a, uh, a Shetland sheep. Uh, and uh, without her coat, she even looks smaller than what she did before. Uh, so we did shear them. Uh, we, um, we sheared Marley, which is uh, over here. So he got a trim up. We decided to leave probably about a centimeter on their back and Tara wanted their feet and the mullet. Hi, bud. <laughs> Done. Uh, or left behind uh, because uh, well, it looks kind of neat and uh, bugs. Uh, so when they're shaved right down, uh, then they can get uh, sunburn and bugs uh, really, um, really affect them there. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? <laughs> are you bathing <laughs> or scratching? Uh, so Shanzi was done uh, by Tara uh, a while back, uh, probably about three weeks ago now. Um, now she did a, a fairly decent job, but she was using trimmers. Uh, so it probably took her about four hours to do. Um, we may get the proper sh uh, shearing equipment, uh, but the big scare of course is you don't want to clip their skin. Uh, and that's always the uh, what's on your mind when you're you know uh, learning something new. Uh, but the shears that they use nowadays are uh, you know, they've got the safety guides in place and um, practice makes perfect. Uh, you can always pull up on the heel of it to go a little bit uh, higher, uh, take your time. So that's something that we'll likely look into next year. Um, and we'll uh, do our own sheep and alpaca shearing. So the first night we put them in uh, to the barn inside because we didn't want them to catch a chill. Uh, they've just been um, freshly shorn and we, um, we didn't want them to get wet with the threat of the thunder showers and everything happening. Uh, so we put them in the barn. Uh, the first 36 to 48 hours, their wool actually grows faster at that point than any other time. Uh, so they develop that, uh, that base, that uh, back up again to give them a little bit of uh, insulation from the cold and the heat uh, and of course uh, the rain. Uh, with the lanolin that's in their wool. Uh, so I just missed Turbo. Turbo, where are you, bud? You were just right here. There's Turbo. So he's our, he's our big boy. <laughs> Turbo. Hi, bud. Look at that beautiful big head of yours. <laughs> uh, their uh, aspect ratio changes so much. Um, Oh, no, you're not going to let me pet you? They're a little skittish. You know, it's, it's interesting when, when, they, um, when, they, when their wool is sheared off. Uh, they, can, they can feel so much in different areas, so they're, they're kind of a little jumpy. <laughs> you're not going to let me pet you, are you, bud? <laughs> Just your head. Yeah, because your head always gets pet. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, so that that is them. Uh, now I will um, I'll show you the um, cheap shearing on that, and we have done some other ones in the past. You can always check out those videos as well. Um, I'll give you a little taste as to um, uh, how the shearing went here the other day uh, in this video that I took.
Atlas, how you doing, little man? Yeah? <laughs> Is there going to be some new animals that come in today? I think. Possibly. Oh, what was that? I flipped up the... <laughs> I flipped up... <laughs> What is is that a reflection? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're just like a cat, I guess. What? I'm leaving. I'm going this way. <laughs> um, so, uh, so something else that's uh, the, the last couple videos I showed uh, Petey and Piper. Uh, they were in the pond eating the duckweed. Of course, the ducks have been eating the duckweed as well, uh, and they are making some progress in uh, in cutting it down. It was um, it was fully packed right across the top, so there's uh, quite a bit of duckweed. It does grow very fast. Um, I was a little skeptical when Tara put as much as she did in because I know how fast this duckweed can uh, can grow. Uh, so it is clearing off uh, in, it's not getting as thick as it was before. Uh, now that Petey and Piper have been uh, helping the ducks eat that duckweed on the pond. Uh, so there's lots of protein in it. And uh, lots of food for the birds and of course Petey and Piper as well. Hey guys, going for a swim? Uh, we left the duckweed out of this top pond just because it can clog up uh, the stream over here, which gets clogged up fast enough uh, with feathers and little bits of hay in here. So we have to uh, kind of continuously clean it out. So, of course, in the, uh, I think it was the last video, we went over the, uh, the feet when, uh, when these guys got their feet done. Uh, and it's amazing on... You know, when you, when you live with animals day in, day out, you don't you know, you see the change so slowly. Uh, so in that uh, last video, I did, actually it was two weeks ago, I think, uh, I put the footage from last August when Daisy came in. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really impactful um, when you see that. Because, uh, you know, it, it, she couldn't even, she couldn't walk. She lied down all the time, 95% of the time. Uh, she would get up just to move around. Uh, and she's doing fantastic now. Although she can't run as fast as little Meadow here and Levi, which is Meadow's dad back over there. Um, they, um, Levi came in with two ponies uh, a couple years ago and um, one of the ponies was pregnant. And of course I delivered this little filly uh, last spring. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, um, you know, click on that subscribe button, or uh, you can always go onto the playlist, or and go onto the playlist uh, and check out because we do weekly videos on all the animals, uh, new animals that come in, whatever's happening on the farm. Hi, Coco. Uh, and um, you know, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff that goes on, and when you go back and look at the videos, you don't realize it. Levi. So if you watched uh, the video that I put out uh, this morning. Uh, it was for Olight uh, LED flashlights. Uh, and there was a scene, if you made it all the way to the end of that video, uh, of course, these two came running out to see what was going on. Uh, and Levi here, uh, being the little troublemaker that he is, <laughs> started pulling on the back of my pocket. Uh, and then I crouched down, and then uh, we kind of ended it with the perfect scene being nose to nose. Uh, so that was cute. But I guess it's eating time now, hey bud? <laughs> All right. Oh, you, I just want to hug you, come on. <laughs> oh, you're my little mini herd. There you are. Yeah. So they're all about breath. Uh, like if you get down onto their level, which is important with animals, whatever you're trying to make a bond, um, getting down to their level, uh, and you're not kind of overpowering and overtowering them. Uh, you're just down, you're one of the animals. So Petey and Piper aren't in their bed, and I didn't really see them. So the next place uh, that I usually look is one of their favorite spots. Oh, don't mind me, ducks. I'm just walking by. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so they, uh, they usually get down here and eat the duckweed down in this area here. 
Uh, and then they usually go over to a quiet place. Not so quiet now because I'm walking over there, I guess. <laughs> uh, but if <laughs> you can see them, <laughs> there they are. <laughs> uh, so they just kind of nestle themselves in, uh, lie in the sun and into the, the brush. Is that your second nest? Is that your day bed? <laughs> Uh, so we haven't got to clearing this section yet, cleaning out the underbrush. Uh, what we do is we let the animals clean up the, uh, the leaves. Usually they only go so high. We'll likely leave this tree intact and pull out all of the bottom stuff. Uh, and then uh, we do something like this, just to kind of clear the area out, uh, pile it, and just kind of make these natural little, uh, little piles. Uh, and then it looks like this. Levi, you got an itch? <laughs> you got an itchy bum? <laughs> well, you're moving that whole cage. <sighs> oh, it's good though, eh? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, just get that itch. Just, just don't destroy the place. <laughs> no, don't destroy the place. Look at all the hay. What do you do? You put your head right in the hay? <laughs> there's one of turbo's favorite spots he's got a couple uh, they like this spot here i guess because it's underneath this tree so it gives them some shade uh, and it's in some cool sand uh, this here is actually one half of the uh, of a captain's bed uh, so there's usually drawers when it's when it's an actual bed uh, there are drawers, so you can see there's uh, one, two, and three. And the other one, if you can see, at the end of the rabbit hutch right there, uh, that is the other half of it uh, that the rabbits use to go in and kind of get away. Uh, so <laughs> it's one of their more favorite spots. Sometimes you can actually see, it doesn't look like there's anything in there now, but the, uh, the ducks will go in and lay their eggs. Uh, and of course Bronwyn doesn't need shearing because she's a haired sheep, aren't you? Yeah, it just all falls off. Easy maintenance. <laughs> okay, who do we have here? So these are the two that are going to be going home uh, with Dwight and with Toby. So we've got Baxter here, which is Coco's. And we also have April, um, which was named Shelby in the beginning because she looks so much like Sheldon. <laughs> hey, bud, what are you doing? Are you eating? Yeah, uh, the boys seem a lot more, um, a lot more comfortable with humans. The girls are still a little bit shy, uh, and we've found that uh, over the years that tends to be more the case. Uh, like uh, with Coco here, when she was young, uh, she didn't want really uh, any, not much to do with uh, with humans. But uh, she came around pretty quickly uh, after that. Hey, bud. Oh, yes. You just have to know that, you know, we were petting you and we get those scratchy spots right between the horns <laughs> that goats just can't reach. And maybe is why Billy and Carl keep on bashing their head against the tree to try to scratch it, right? Yeah. Oh, you'll just do that all day, won't you? Oh, it's good stuff. Or if you get them in the neck here, too. Um, they really tend to, because that's another area that they just can't, can't get at. Hey, oh no, you like the head. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Turbo. <laughs> you want some of that too? Oh, yeah. Let's try April. April? Come here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come here, April. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, so some of the other kids. So we have Blackie. Hi, Blackie. She's always on the lookout for when we come around, she's like, what food do you have? And it's way up there. It's way up here. Ooh, what's this? Oh, there it is. Yeah, the stuff you can't reach, right? <laughs> Shh, don't tell the others. Uh, okay, the kid. So here is another pile. This pile actually has some dirt and debris in it as well uh, because when we were clearing the land back, way back when, um, our Tara's brother 
decided he would just take a D9 tractor and bulldoze all the stuff into one site. Um, well, it's, it was, uh, it's not so bad now because everything's kind of decomposing and the soil is there. Uh, but we, now we've got this big mound. Um, which the kids play on so it's not too too bad having logs that run up as well uh, Makes great play structure for the kids uh, You can see that one there just a large fallen tree that we've kind of put over top of it uh, And these guys are often seen on on there uh, So we have these four kids which will also be going home uh, Likely the beginning of August. Oh, that's not your kid. Is it? <laughs> Oh, uh, Petunia and her two kids. Look at, look at this. <laughs> oh, nice. That's Melvin. <laughs> nice mohawk, buddy. <laughs> uh, and then Molly over there. So that's uh, Petunia's two kids. And of course, you can see here he's trying to scratch that exact same spot. He's like, well, let's, you know, hit it with the... Oh, there we go. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, and then we have um, Bonnie and Clyde. So Bonnie here and Clyde here. And Clyde's pretty good too. Here, you want me to get that spot for you? Oh, there it is. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Melvin, on the other hand, uh, you know, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of a baby. <laughs> so he's scratching his horn. If I come over here and decide to help him out. Come here, buddy. Let me, let me help you scratch your horn. <laughs> no? So, not so much. But that's a nice mohawk. That's a nice look. Um, some of the problem was because of the pandemic this year. Um, we usually have volunteers and, and, um, and, and other people that want to be volunteers uh, come and sit with the babies um, shortly after they're born uh, and getting that bonding. Uh, and we found that they didn't get quite enough bonding uh, because they're not as friendly. They're still pretty friendly, uh, but um, they're not uh, as hands-on as they could be. And I know there's a few of you out there that are counting the animals as we go through, which uh, <laughs> that's, uh, you catch me sometimes because I do miss some animals. Um, so here is Holly. Hi, Holly. Holly's last year's little girl. And you can see here, you can just walk right up to Holly and she has no problem with the affection. Uh, but again, last year, uh, when she was just a little kid, uh, there wasn't so much petting. The boys were a little bit more friendlier. So the girls just need a little time to come around. Right, Holly? Yeah. <laughs> in one of the last videos, I did talk about putting some sheep and goats in this area to uh, clean things up. But there are a lot of grains on the ground, so we want to watch that. Oh! Okay, it looks like the chicks that I kind of showed, oh, they're all over the place, <laughs> in the last video <laughs> are out and about with mom. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and there's some of them that are outside. So this is kind of the nursery area, and then we've got the nursery inside the nursery. What are you doing? Are you just going to follow me around? <laughs> crazy bird. <laughs> Got nothing better to do than to follow the human. Uh, so here we go. There's the uh, the chick. Some outside, some inside. They were stuck inside uh, underneath this uh, half of a uh, dog kennel, uh, which is, we've got plenty of dog kennels around and, and they do work really well as shelters. And so those are them. Now we should also have we can make our way through this tall grass. Oh, there we go. So there's Mama. And somebody did mention um, we haven't had we haven't had a lot of Muscovy chicks in the uh, last few years. And I was thinking that the darker ones, while they are more mallard or rowan in colored as ducklings, uh, and the little yellow one is more kind of pecan-ish, we'll say. Um, that um, Muscovies, they do come in all sorts of colors and patterns when they are ducklings. Uh, so they could very well just all be uh, Muscovies. Uh, my initial thought was maybe there was a 
uh, a nest that had, it was kind of a community nest, which can sometimes happen and can still very well be the case. Um, but, um, but yeah, we'll just have to see what comes of these ones as they grow up. Oh, and who do we have here? We've got the teenager, or the juvenile. <laughs> Where's your mom? Where's your mom? <laughs> I guess it's time to be out on your own. Okay, and this mom hen is, it looks like she's kind of rounding up all of her young. <laughs> oh, there's ducklings in there. They're just, there's just a, a community mix, isn't there? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, eh, not that much of a mix. She didn't like the duckling close to her chicks. There we go. Now this is a lesson showing all the young how to forage. Like, this is how you do it. <laughs> and then the little ones are looking. Oh, what do you got, Mom? What do you got, Mom? Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's cute. Good job, Mom. Now that Princess and Rue, which went home about a week ago, are gone from the front area, uh, we just have Hazel here with all of her big mound of hay. And it looks like Sheldon is taking a siesta. What are you doing in there, buddy? <laughs> Did you do all your foraging for the day and now it's time just to chew your cud? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's some people out there that wanted to see you, Sheldon, so I had to make sure I found you. There you are. All right, so we are up front in the picnic area, and this is where Fernando's been hanging out here. And uh, Atlas. So this is almost going to turn into a game where whenever I film, you should be able to see Atlas wherever I go. <laughs> uh, Tara's up here weeding and eating her freezy. <laughs> and she has done a great job. Um, now, some of you might comment uh, you should use uh, Roundup. Well, that's a chemical. We don't really want to use that around the animals. Uh, blowtorch, we tried to use that, and she just doesn't like to use that. And then there's all, all kinds of online recipes as well. She prefers to pluck them from the root herself and harvest them. I give them to the animals. <laughs> so, so that's the good part of it. It does take some time, uh, but we're going to have to dump Fernando out uh, because since Tara is down uh, with her knee pads on, she is down more at his level. So he tends to come over and uh, bother her quite a bit. And so we'll have to put him on a timeout. Uh, now going over this way, we've got the, uh, the two Muscovies, which are up here, which I forgot their names over the past while as to who they were. Um, so this is actually cheese and quackers <laughs> and the reason why I kind of forgot is because um, They were they were more chocolatey brown when they were young uh, and if you look closely They are patched in brown. Well, there's some shadowing there, uh, but especially on the tail you can see there's brown uh, and underneath uh, so they are not completely white like high is uh, and then of, go of course over here we've got Fred which is the <laughs> The Pekin with, uh, he's got a little tuff on his head. <laughs> and he's got his two girls. So we just call that uh, Fred's crew, or Fred and his girls. Uh, all the ducks don't have names, uh, but some of them do. Uh, of course, um, you know, some that come in that already have names. Other ones that are hatched out here don't necessarily. We just say like Fred and the crew. <laughs> I have enough names in my head. People are uh, often amazed as to how I can remember all the names. Uh, but uh, Cheese and Quackers here uh, are two that, um, you know, there's a great example that uh, I forgot who you were. And you guys always hang up here, don't you? Okay, so I'm up here in the boys' pen and you can see all this grass. And I mentioned about uh, putting some other animals up here, uh, mainly sheep to clear that out um, because the goats just aren't eating it. <laughs> there's, there's not enough animals. Billy, what are you doing, Billy? Why are you making that face? <laughs> Here, look, what's this? Here, Billy. <laughs> uh, he must have just um, smelled his pee because usually that's the face they make. 
<clears throat> the proud, the proud look. Billy, where are you going, buddy? Here, look. What do I have for you? Here, look. Eat that. Look, there's lots. Oh, yeah, see, you like it. What, do you have to be hand-fed? <laughs> it's all over the ground, literally all over the ground, buddy. <laughs> I don't have any more, and there's none right in this general area. Do you want me to make you a salad? <laughs> oh, you're starting to get a little smelly. You can always tell when you get close to the, uh, the intact males because they, uh, they have that musky smell to them. Uh, and then we have Carl over there. <laughs> Looks like he's, uh, he was rubbing his butt up against something there. Uh, and then we have Chuck. So Chaco is uh, still here and he, as I mentioned in one of the other videos, he may be going uh, as well with uh, Princess and Rue. Um, but uh, the people who are interested in him are just kind of making some arrangements. Uh, he is intact, so uh, he would likely need to be fixed. Here guys, I made you a salad. Oh yeah, it's like, oh, where you get this from, Mark? This is great stuff. Uh, it's literally all around you. <laughs> Here, Billy, you want some salad? No, not my finger. All right, I'm gonna give it to Carl then, if you're gonna be like that. Carl, that plant did nothing to you. Here. Oh, look, fresh green, no. No, okay, Choco eat it. <laughs> That's a thorn bush, well I guess maybe it's Good for scratching, I suppose. <laughs> oh, male go. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, you got a little something on your head there, buddy. <laughs> uh, oh, they are funny, aren't they? So coming into the barn, I wanted to give you an update as to the rabbits. So the final tally was 280 rabbits that came in. Uh, so uh, here we go. We are down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and these are one sex. Uh, and then the other ones, uh, those are the girls, I think. And these are the boys in here. Uh, so we've got about 15 remaining, uh, which is great. You know, this pen's now empty. Uh, and a lot of them went uh, to new homesteaders that, uh, there was one woman that uh, bought the property uh, last year, I think it was. She's had it for about a year. Uh, and she's got all these outbuildings and she was planning on getting some animals. And she came and picked up five. <laughs> and then she went back. And then the next day she got up and she said, there's just not enough rabbits there. I need some more rabbits. <laughs> so she uh, got 50. <laughs> so she had 55 of them. Uh, and that was the majority of the rabbits were homesteaders that wanted some animals. You know, they were just, um, they had uh, animals. They didn't have any rabbits. They wanted to add them to, uh, or they just wanted to start out. Um, so we would give them all one sex, of course. So they wouldn't run into the same problem uh, as the woman uh, who um, who brought these rabbits to us. Uh, and that woman did bring us uh, some more rabbits. She is still catching them. Uh, they are running uh, rampant throughout the neighborhood. Uh, and these are the ones that came in. I think there's about 25 of them. Uh, so these are the ones here. Yeah, all different uh, ages. There's, uh, it looks like that one over there is a... Uh, standard Rex. Uh, there is, uh, they're, they're just all mixed rabbits. And of course different ages. What are you doing just sitting in there? <laughs> uh, that's the way to do it, eh? Um, now I did talk in the last video about uh, feed. Uh, hay and what to feed the, uh, the animals, what we feed the animals. Uh, and uh, there was some question uh, about that. 
uh, on um, you know why this and and uh, how much of this and things of that nature. Uh, so we basically give them um, a, a good quality hay uh, that we um, we feed the same hay to our goats and to our ponies and to our sheep, uh, and it's a good uh, good mix. Uh, rabbits require about 80% of their diet to be hay. Uh, now you can give them fresh greens as well, um, which is really good. I'd stay away from iceberg lettuce. Uh, romaine lettuce is probably uh, a little bit better for them. Um, iceberg is just essentially water and doesn't really do too much. Um, so, you know, you can give them a, a, a mixture of different things. We also do give uh, our rabbits some grain as well. But like I mentioned earlier, you want to stick to, um, you want to not give them so much of the grains. Uh, because us as humans, we eat tons of bread and tons of grain products. Uh, and they're just, they're not really good for us either. Uh, but we still eat them because uh, we enjoy them. Uh, you just want to do it in moderation. Uh, now, I also did mention about, uh, going into the woods and picking up a, a branch, uh, a tree branch. Um, so that's great and all. You just want to make sure there are certain ones that are toxic to rabbits. Uh, and some of them are your pine and your fir and your juniper. Uh, so those ones, it's more so the sappy trees. Uh, spruce isn't so bad. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the toys that you'd buy in the store are kiln dried. Uh, so a lot of those toxins are bled out. Um, but best to check with your veterinary on proper feeding and proper housing. Um, and you know this is kind of a more of a what we do here um, for example uh, maple trees uh, are good and they're bad for rabbits uh, I know silver maple and sugar maple wood is good to give them uh, but other maples are not we have Manitoba maple here on the property uh, I'm not sure about that so I wouldn't even bother giving it to them and if I did uh, I would uh, dry it out and bake it uh, and that will get rid of any of the toxins. Uh, so in the end, uh, whenever you're looking at nutrition for your animal, a lot of animals are different, just like a lot of humans are different. Uh, always check with your vet for the proper care. Uh, they're the ones that have gone through all that training and are, will be able to help you out. We have some new arrivals that just came in, so I don't know much about them. So we're going to go in and check things out. So who do we have here? <laughs> What are their names? The big one is Daisy. Daisy, okay, we have a Daisy. <laughs> and Tulip. Okay, we don't have a Tulip. And are they Canadian Arcot sheep, or are they different? Uh, so, um, Daisy's daddy is a Canadian Arcot, but her mom was just a rescue that my mom had one. Okay, yeah, because they don't look, and then they, they then don't look Tulip. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they look slightly square. Yeah, they do look very <laughs> yeah. square, right? A little more square than ours, but that's o that's okay. Square sheep are uh, allowed here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, and turbo. Face is it's very cute. Uh, Daisy was born on April twenty third, twenty eighteen, so she's two, and Tulip was born July 9th of twenty nineteen, so she's one. Okay, perfect. FYI, you're on YouTube. <laughs> Person in the background. <laughs> you guys have fun. But these guys are like, home. you know what? You'll never meet two sheep that are more like pets ever. Do you keep their collars on all the time? <laughs> I did because they were loose on the property. Oh, right. So if I had to catch them to put them away at night. But usually they just came, so. Yeah. You could take them off. Yeah, they don't I'm just, I'm not a collar person. Yeah, they, just well, they, it for a couple of days, see, you know, if Well, they I actually, have to... I actually had harnesses Sorry. on them, not collars. Oh, okay. I'm because sneak you can't off. trade yourself? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why the lions, okay. they had actual harnesses okay. on. Yeah. I, I just got the collars for $2.50 a red apple and brought them here for you. Who's that, Sheldon? Is that Daisy and Tulip? <laughs> Uh, so they will remain up in this area. They were in a, um, a more of a pen, so they didn't have a lot of uh, forage to go for. Uh, so they seem to be really loving it here. Uh, so the reason why they were surrendered by the owner is uh, health issues. Uh, so she was having uh, some health issues and with everything else going on in her life, um, she, um, you know, she unfortunately didn't have time uh, for these two. 
Uh, so she was looking for a place that they could go where there would be people. Uh, and of course, we're open uh, on weekends and, and we have people that come in. Uh, so they're going to get uh, a lot of hands-on. Uh, apparently they were, or at least um, Tulip was a bottle baby, uh, lived in the house, <laughs> and, um, uh, and her mother had sheep. Uh, so apparently her mother had uh, Hannibal uh, that uh, she surrendered a few years ago, uh, which recently passed away this spring. So I am back in the nursery uh, to show you the other four that came in. <laughs> which Tara has kind of locked this, so, just so we don't get any escapees. Uh, and here they are. <laughs> so do they look familiar at all? Uh, these are Sarama roosters, uh, the same as Atlas is. Uh, so when there's four of them there. Come on guys, what are you doing hiding behind there? You're gonna make me climb in? <laughs> You're cute little guys, aren't you? <laughs> uh, the stocky little, stocky little roosters. Okay, well, I won't bother you too much, I suppose, but that's the new ones. Uh, so they are going to remain in this pen here uh, just until they get, uh, you know, they get all settled in. Um, and then uh, we may just put them back out again. Uh, so that is it for this video. Uh, I'll um, go over the garden in next week's video. <laughs> Squeaky crows. <laughs> there. There you go. You tell them, Atlas. <laughs> uh, so I'll get to the, uh, the garden tour next weekend. We'll see what's happening out in the garden. A uh, lot going on this weekend. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that I got this video out for you. Uh, so until next week, have a wonderful week and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.